This podcast episode is dedicated to empowering sensitive people to recognize their trait as sensory intelligence and bring their unique gifts into service for the crucial roles we play in communities, businesses, and leadership globally. I'm Julie B. Ellen, sensitivity expert, psychotherapist, and founder of the online sensitive empowerment community. I'm Willow McIntosh, founder of Illuminance and leader of the high sensory intelligence movement. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, Willow. Hi, Julie. Great to, uh, great to be here today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. It is our next episode, and we're really excited this week to talk to you about finding your purpose as an HSP or a person with high sensory intelligence, especially in this uncertain time where we're all on lockdown around the world. And the un, you know the uncertainty of um, perhaps finding our our calling and listening to our inner truth and you know and, and really sort of taking this opportunity to yeah to really understand what it is that we're here to do and how we can really honour ourselves with with finding our truth. So we're very much looking forward to sharing this content with you today. Oh, I love it. What a great subject, and I'm sure that it's going to be helpful for so many people right now. Yes, I really think so. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think there is a, you know, there's a real calling right now, especially for us as, um, you know, as high sensory people with this amazing trait that we have, and we, we have these wonderful gifts to share. And, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, there's often a natural calling. I, you may have found this with your, your coaching and on obviously the work that you do your end, Julie, as well. But I find that, you know, we're often really le- sort of le- leaning towards being coaches and consultants and healers and, and working with people. Do, do you find that? Yes, I'm seeing that so much in this population too. And it's, it excites me because I think about the, the HSPs that I support and, and to just kind of watch them start to go out and start their own businesses. And most of the time it's about helping other, <laughs> other people in some way. <laughs> right. <clears throat> yeah. I, I find exactly the same thing. Yes. It's, it's, it, you know, that there's a calling to want to create change in the world and, you know, and, and, and do wonderful things for people. But I, I find that too, that it's often geared around working with people. Um, sometimes, you know, there's, there are the creative entrepreneurs in us, there are the actors, the artists, you know, that, that sort of wonderful creative side that we have. Um, but I think it's an interesting, it's an interesting point to refer to almost like a, you know, a good place to start if you're out there right now and you're thinking, wow, you know, perhaps you're not at work and maybe you're, you're at home and, um, there is this kind of question going on thinking, wow, is this a good point to start to you know, maybe either look at a new vocation or maybe just to start making those steps as a coach or a consultant um, and what it means to, you know, take those steps and and even start doing some sessions online. Yeah. I mean, isn't it incredible? Even right now we're, we're talking to people all over the world. I mean, it's, uh, that's the amazing thing about technology. We've got access to each other all over the place. And I, I absolutely love that. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. I think it's, it's amazing. It, it really is. You know, we take, I, I take it for granted, you know, but actually the ability that we have on a day to day basis just to be able to broadcast ourselves literally all over the world. And I, I just find it absolutely amazing. It's, it's such an, an incredible opportunity. And I, and I think, you know, because we are all at home at the moment, the online, our laptops and our cameras and our phones are literally the, the only kind of contact that we have in terms of actually sharing our message and supporting people outside of our of our own homes at the moment and um and so you know i'm I'm really interested to sort of explore a bit about how to you know really kind of tune in and think well how is it that i would really like to help people and, and what can i do right now online to perhaps run online sessions or is there a video that i can make or a training that i can do that's really aligned with what's most important to me and how i would really like to help you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I love that. I, and just talking about this, I think is going to be supportive to people and just kind of learning about options and hearing from people like us that are doing it right now. And I'm certainly 
so grateful that I had been working to this point to really get, well, my initial goal was how can I work from home? <laughs> that was my initial goal. And I've been sort of working towards that for, you know, some time. And now I'm, boy, I'm certainly grateful that um, I'm able to do that. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, that's 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 really lovely. Yes, because you know there, there's v many different reasons why you know we'd like to have our own business or you know to to sort of be uh to to work from home. But I, you know, often as HSPs, we we like to be on our own agenda and we like to be able to serve from our own hearts. And I think that that that's quite important um, in many cases. And um, so so I'd love to know, you know, what was it that kind of got you started with that? Did you did you just because I know you're you're a trained psychotherapist as well. So, did you um, start to do sessions at home with in psychotherapy? Is that how it sort of began? Wow, that's such a great question. It's interesting to kind of think back on how I've always followed my instincts and not so much like a laid out plan ahead of time. But um, I think let's see how it started was um, yeah definitely started obviously with in person sessions with my clients and then I just saw such amazing changes in them and I've always really loved writing and uh, started out writing um, some books and then that just really getting to hear from readers all over the world and, and how much the you know it, it helped them really motivated me to start to bring it online and then i created an online course that um wow that's been really amazing that i i love doing the online course because you get to have people from all over the world together and learning together and and that kind of uh i think that's kind of how it got started and started to do uh and then working with this population of people um i started opening up options for like coaching and consultations because in, in the United States we're most, we're usually limited to only being licensed within within one your state that you live in for for most of us um, so then it kind of means that you can only work with people within that state and since I really loved working globally I opened up sort of a new umbrella of coaching and consultation that allows you to do um, your online work all over the world so it started kind of turning out like that and people were finding out about me and requesting to work with me and so it, it kind of started to flow like that and then started as i was doing um i started putting out a lot of content whether it was videos or podcasts things like that and people started to love it and then i would get asked this is what this anybody that's kind of looking into getting exposure for themselves. This is something that worked really well for me is that once I started putting out content that people really liked, I, I got asked by many different places to do, you know, I, I got asked to do podcasts for people or interviewed for different summits. And then the Shift Network asked me to do a course with them. And that kind of blew up in terms of exposure for me. So the exposure just kind of kept on rolling out there and um and that's kind of how the how it looked for me and then i just love connecting to my community so i started my online sensitive empowerment community more more recently and uh so that's been kind of, that's kind of like the summary <laughs> wow <clears throat> what a wonderful wonderful journey there's some there's some really lovely um, um, and really helpful things that you've you've touched on there, Julie. You know, I find what what's so interesting. I think with with because I've had a you know, um, I, obviously my kind of journey and my, my path in, into business and, and what I what I do right now. But I, would you say like for people that are listening? I know sometimes when people are are sitting at home and thinking, oh God, you know, I, I, I'd really love to try and do something like this or perhaps follow in the shoes that you've just described there, the journey you've just described there, Julie. And, and I think sometimes people get stuck and think, well, you know, they kind of get stuck in the details or they can't quite see the end point or it all just feels a bit scary. And would you agree how important it is just to, just to get started with oh. something, you know, like even if you don't kind of know exactly what what it's going to like or exactly where you're going but but just how the act of starting and then things just unfold in front of you i love that you're saying that absolutely and and 
you know, to, to note that when I first started doing live interviews and things like that, I was terrified. My heart was racing. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was scary and, and it was not perfect and that was okay. And, and what I, I was just thinking about this the other day, like now when I get asked to go on a live interview or something, I, I, I really get nervous now. It's, it's so amazing to me that I could do that transition. And I wanted to just say that to people that, and you get better at it, right? It's like the first, it, I look at some of my first videos and to now it's like the transition and um, you, you're not going to be perfect and you can't wait for things to be perfect for you to get started. Uh, if you have, a, if you have something to share, uh, that share it. And what I, and you probably found this too in your work, Willow, is like, people connect to you and and because I hear a lot of stories like oh people are already doing that you know how can I be successful but you're you're the only one that's like you you know and connecting to who you are and your shared experience and I, I've always been in a space that that shared my life as a sensitive person shared my challenges and how I overcame my challenges and and what works for me and what doesn't work for me and trying to be myself in the world. And that's, that's what we connect to, isn't it? We connect to people when, you know, when you're there yourself, right? Yes. As in you connect with people when, when they're similar to you, you mean, or like a similar person? Well, I mean like uh, genuine. So if I'm, if I'm, you know, like when I came across your article, I loved what you had to say. I knew who you are, you know, just from your article and what you were sharing and I could feel your passion and that drew me to you. And mm -hmm. I, I became interested in your story because you were sharing your passion. And, and my message to people is to share your passion, share who you are, uh, because that's, that's what people are going to connect to, right? Yeah, absolutely. That, 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 yeah, I could, they, you, you put that so well. I, I think that's, it's, it, that, that really is the kind of the, the way to look at it. You know, it's actually when we're kind of looking at looking at starting something like this, or even if we were looking to take the next step in our business, like we get, I mean, from my own experience, you know, I get really caught up in my own mind and kind of processing and thinking about outcomes. And, and especially as an HSP, you know, we way over process anyway, or we can do. Um, I find that, you know, we, we, it's actually when we, we kind of lose the perspective of exactly what you just said there. It's like if we have something to share, we don't know quite the effect that we could have on the world. We don't know quite, you know, the, the transformation or the things that we say, the people that really need to hear our message. There's no way we will ever know just how powerful that could be until we literally walk out the door, cross the threshold and just start doing it. You know? Uh, yeah, I love that. You, you know, and I, it's almost like, you know, I think we can... I think it's it, it, rather than overthinking, I think it, it really is so useful to, you know, just to take those steps and just to start doing it. And because I remember, you know, starting when I was, um, you know, when I started, started out doing this, I knew that I wanted to present. I loved being in workshops. I loved being in front of people. And, and when I first started doing it, you know, I mean, the one of the first workshops I did, I spent loads of money on the venue and kind of working on the content for months. And, and I think it was about four people turned up. Or, you know, <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and it's, it was just like, oh, was so deflating. I thought, oh, God, God, you know, I put all this time and effort into it. But then, you know, I just started to realize there's so many different things that can happen and so many things that can go wrong. And, and I just, I just continue with it because I knew in my heart I needed to present and kind of work with people. And then, then I do the next one. And then, yes, there'll be more people coming, but the content wasn't right. And, and when I look back, you know, I didn't really know right then exactly what I was doing I mean, obviously I was delivering great content I was doing my my best job but what you know it was actually the fact that I just went out there and did it and I just kept rolling along and then gradually people would say to me wow you really really helped me I never knew that I could do this or that was available to me and unless I just trusted and gone out there and done it there's just you know there's no way of us knowing quite the effect and just how important our personal message is in the world Wow, you said something so important that because there was something inside of you and, and I have that too. There's like, I call it a light. There's like a light that just needs to shine. And you said that you, that like you, even though it didn't go out, go the way you wanted it to go, there was this thing inside of you that was saying like, you knew you wanted, you had something in your heart that you wanted to share. And 
you just had that kind of pushing you through past those obstacles, right? That's the thing is like, there has to be that inside of you that it's like, I, I need to share this message and I, and I have to get it out there. And I know it's going to, there's a, something inside of you that just knows that it could resonate with people and, and to keep doing it. And you did that because you could have stopped. And right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I, uh, I think that's the piece that if you, when we're in that space of whatever stage of business we're at, whether we're looking to create a new product or do a new venture, or we're literally just starting out, it's that light that you're referring to there, Julie. It's like, you know, growing up for myself throughout my life, it's all, for me, it was all about the potential of, of human beings and what we're capable of. And, you know, my passion is very much around light workers and highly sensitive people and that gift that we have and the importance of that gift in the world. But growing up, it was, it, that was constantly in my heart. Whenever I'd watch a movie about human potential or, you know, a great kind of, a, a great sort of achievement that someone's made, you know, the amazing leaders that we've had in history, I, I would be in tears. It would be so moving for me. And if I were able to have a conversation with someone and they'd you know, I was able to kind of start facilitating them and supporting them in taking a step in their life or something. It was so important to me. And it was, you know, it's almost like a, a piece of our heart or a piece of our piece of our soul that is that we're born with that just knows that there's a particular thing that we want to do or there's a message that we want to give. We, we, we want to share this thing that's so important to us. And I think as long as we are nurturing that light and just walking along that path as best we can, things will just unfold for us. You know, it, it, it just kind of goes from there. Do you, you, you think? Oh, I love that. Yes, I do think so. And it's like the, the passion inside of you sort of brightens that light and charges that energy to keep walking. And I really believe that following that flow, following that inner, you know, that you can just feel that energy and passion. Even when you're talking, you can feel it. And um, if, if we're following that, there's, it's like, I have this belief that, and I often, um, do this with like clients, for example, clients or students. And, um, I'll say, you know, stand in front of a certain path and see what it feels like. And, and don't get, uh, distracted by what other people are saying that you should or shouldn't do, because I just fully believe there's this, there's this different way that we often do things and as sensitive people. And I think that, what is in, what has always worked for me is to follow that flow that something's just calling me and and maybe i even change what i'm doing because i i i felt a different flow i kind of have this feeling like if you just start following that energy that there's almost like these different doors that open up on that path that never would have opened for you had you not started that walk right mm, right absolutely yeah by just kind of being true to that particular feeling and 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 you know being courageous enough just to keep following it and and going with it you know i think that for me that has that has been life changing for me and it's and yes we come across difficulties you know sometimes we don't make enough money in the month or sometimes you know things go wrong or like you know it's it's i think there is this this sort of misconception that when we're when we're living our purpose everything just falls in front of our feet I mean, yes, in some ways, things do fall in front of our feet. And when we are aligned, we, you know, we, more and more opportunities come to us. But it is tricky and it is, it is difficult and there, there will be challenges along the way. And we grow through those challenges. Mm -hmm. And I think you've also mentioned something that's really important as well is, is you know, when we do, we do do things in our own way. And I think we are often challenged by what other people will think about it. And because we're so empathic and we really tune into other people's energy, I think it's very easy for us to kind of get knocked off our path a bit as HSPs and to sort of have, have self-doubt and think, oh, no, I don't think I can do that. And, you know, I think it's just so important for us to maintain our own personal integrity and work out what works for us to get the support that we need and not to worry about what other people think about it, you know? Yeah, honor, honor that inside of you, right? And I think you said something important too. It's like you, you get back up. And there's definitely obstacles. Any, any entrepreneur out there will tell you <laughs> there's many obstacles in the path. And like for me, it has, my challenges often have to do with learning technology and um, keeping up with all that I want to be able to do, uh, you know, and keep learning all of that, those new ways of doing things and adjusting. And 
Um, I think I heard somebody say one time, it's like being an entrepreneur, it's almost like you're, you're putting out fires a lot, like little things that, that go wrong. But the, the thing is, is that there's something inside of you that just keeps getting back up, that you, you know there's going to be challenges along the way, but you dive in and you figure out how to overcome those challenges and then you keep going, right? Yeah, exactly. That that's the key. That's the that's the that's the key piece is is that we keep going and, and that we don't give up. You know, because the, the thing is, it's like the things. If we don't do that, I think if if we choose not to, there's 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 the great phrase. I think it's it's the um, there's two pains in the world. There's the pain of changing and there's the pain of not changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's 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 always something similar here where I think. You know, if we do try something and it's aligned with our heart and it doesn't quite go as we expect or we kind of share it with our parents or something or our, our spouse, you know, and it kind of gets thrown back or, we, you know, we, we can't do it or, we, you know, we're told we should just go and get a normal job or whatever. The trouble is if we find ourselves a few years down the line having not honored that piece of us that's so important, our heart's calling. The trouble is, is we end up in as much pain, probably a lot more pain than we would experience through going the trials and tribulations of following our heart and, and facing the challenges of being an entrepreneur. Yes, absolutely. And you, you were saying something earlier too about the, you know, that what you feel when you know you've helped someone and, and, it, and like having that be a goal, even if it's one person, right? It's like, if you have a goal, if you start out with a goal that I, I want to help one person out there with my message or my, what I believe that I can help them with, that's your fuel. Like that's the fuel to keep going, isn't it? It's like every time I get an email or I hear from a reader or somebody in my classes and community, it's like, it feels so good to know that you're able to share something that can help another person. And, and I always say, it's like, I always have this thing too, where it's like, if you, if you make a mistake, if something doesn't go how you intended it to go, go into your intention behind it. Have you ever noticed that? It's like, if you ever follow your intentions, like, oh, I had an intention for this, even though it turned out this way, that wasn't my intention, but my internal intention for this, it, it makes you feel energized. It makes you feel like you can recover quickly if your if your intention was to help someone, right? Mm. Does that make Absolutely. sense? 100%. Yeah, 100%. And, and interesting, you know, I think that's, that's the real heart's calling. You know, it's, it's not, yes, the lifestyle comes and yes, the money comes and yes, you know, we have our own businesses and that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, it boils down to how we can help another person and how we can how we can help another person, but how we can help another person aligned with the gift that we've been given. You know, that's what I feel is so wonderful and drives us as, you know, as, as heart centered business owners is that at the end of the day, we, you know, we can create change in the world and it's the kind of change that our heart really wants to make. <clears throat> and, and I agree with you. There's nothing, there's no greater reward than working with someone supporting them to take steps or you know supporting them whatever way and seeing that response and seeing that kind of change in them just nothing like it i think it's you know really really uh it, it's it's the, it's the greatest reward of all and i think you know it's interesting how <clears throat> right now we are in this place where we are in our in our houses at home and we do have this real opportunity to step up, you know, perhaps many of us out there are doing sessions online and we are using zoom and we're kind of, you know, you know, we, we do a lot of one-to-one -one sessions um, anyway, but I think right now there is this opportunity to <clears throat> just to try it, you know, just to kind of look through our existing, our existing kind of email list or our existing phone book and think, you know, who is it that I could really help or who is it that's kind of showed me interest in, you know, in, in what I do, or maybe I could do a little video on Facebook and I could just call people into a bit of a zoom room, a bit of a zoom session and focus on helping with anxiety or helping people get up to set up in business or whatever it may be that our heart really yearns to do. I think this is an amazing opportunity just to take that chance and go for it. Mm, I agree. And you talked about an email list. That's something that I certainly wish that I had known about earlier in my career. Because <laughs> I think that that's something that's important for people to know is like, 
I always say now if I'm consulting with someone who's, who's who wants like leadership or business consulting, it's like one of the first things I tell them is like start thinking about growing an email list and having a website um, so people can can connect with you um, and and not to rely only on social media um, that because we don't own anything on social media we don't own our audiences so that's just kind of like a quick tip I like to throw out there yeah <laughs> you're absolutely right yes it's yeah it, it, it's such an, it, it's a you know really really important part of the process definitely to just to at least have something in place where you know there's a simple landing page that just links to a form that then starts to take email addresses and, and yet, you know, some people might be listening on that thinking, well, I've just got no idea how to do that. But, you know, what, what's, actually, what's actually so fortunate right now is we're in this time where there's, there's so much solutions, online technology solutions out there. There's amazing all-in-one platforms that do things. And actually, by just doing a bit of research and asking around of what other platforms people are using, you can get something in place really, really quickly where it's just, you know, you're providing like a little free video, a little free ebook or just something that, you know, in return for that or like a quiz as, as you and I have, um, you know, where people then have to leave their email and then they're kind of in your system. And then that gives you the opportunity to start providing content and value. Yeah, you can do it in stages too, right? You can start something small that maybe if you don't have a lot of money to invest, you do something where you create it yourself. And then, and, and that's certainly what, how I started out, just kind of doing it myself. And then as I earned a little bit more money, I could like hire somebody to make it a little nicer. And, and then of course, I was sort of always um, kind of adding to what I was doing and shifting what I was doing. So then that would mean I'd have to shift what I was <laughs> saying on my website. And so that required me to learn about that. So it's like, it was just kind of this, um, and my point in, in it is just to share that it's a process, right? You begin, you, you start you, and to um, maybe even create lists about what, I love lists for <laughs> and being able to create little goals on those lists, you know, each step should be something that's not too overwhelming. Um, but I love what you were saying about, you know, that the message behind what you want to share is so important and having that intentional focus of that rather than I'm doing this to make money. Uh, because I believe fully that money comes when we are focused on creating, you know, being able to share that message within us. And, and if it's helping other people, um, then money will follow that if you've got those things in place. What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the fuel behind it, I think, is, is, is as soon as we lose touch with that intention behind it and that that need to want to help in alignment with what our hearts really want to do. As soon as we get out of touch with that, that's where things become really expensive because we put money and resources into places we shouldn't be and things get complicated and we, and we lose heart because, you know, business is a challenging landscape. And if we are not happy to do what we do for free, then there's a problem because, you know, if we're going into it just for the return, just to kind of, you know, get the money, but it's not something that's really what we want to do, then when it starts to get tricky, that's going to be really challenging. Yeah, you have to be inside that space, right? Inside that light. <laughs> doing it because you have to be doing it. You have to share this message within you. I, I think that that's a great way to begin your process, don't you think? Yes, I do. I think that's exactly right. I think it's actually to just take a moment, you know, even if it's with someone else that can, can kind of facilitate the process or whether it's just with yourself and your own kind of inner writing, it's like, it's just to write it down. What is it that I really want to do? What is it that I love doing? What is it that sets my heart alight? What is it that I, you know, what are the kind of feelings that I love to create in others and help them to kind of work through or do and then, and use that as a starting point? Is that, is that kind of what you mean? Yeah, absolutely. And if you wanted to share some of your story, how you got here, it might be interesting to hear too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I wrote a book back in, um, I can't remember when it was now, I think it was um, uh, probably about 10 years ago, I think. And my, my original passion was really about um, human purpose. That was the book was called Finding Heart. And it was about um, helping people to find the courage to to live their purpose 
and from the from that book you know i um, before that i was i was i was working in the in the real estate industry but even though i had a business renovating property during that time what i found was the the people in those indus, in that industry that i was working with my my clients and the investors that i worked with and people in my team actually what i was doing it was, i was actually facilitating those people to be the best that they could be and support them to be in alignment with their purpose even though they were in the real estate industry so my all the way through my career and i started that out in my 20s all, all the way through my heart was still searching for that light it was constantly finding ways for me to do the work that I was actually born to do, which is what I'm doing now. And until the point came in, in 2009 when the credit crunch came and then my business completely switched off. It was, it was a bit like this kind of thing right now. There was, I just wasn't able to do anything at all because the business was really um, reliant on, the, on the, uh, the mortgage products that were available at the time. So, um, so at that time, I then thought, right, okay, this is now my opportunity to shift and make a change. And I started to then, I started to write this book and I, and I went out and I started to run workshops off the back of the book that I'd written. And actually, when I started doing the workshops, like for instance, that one I did where, you know, I was expecting like 150, I had 150 seats, I think, booked and four people turned up. And, and it was actually... It was, it was fine. It was learning to tune into what it was my heart really wanted to do. And originally the book that I wrote was kind of for everyone. I wasn't really focusing on high sensory light workers. And so as I started to walk that path, sometimes it would work and sometimes I'd have a great workshop and, uh, you know, sometimes it wouldn't work. And, and I gradually started to realize the more honest I got and the more I walked the path, the more I realized it's like, wow, okay, hang on a minute. It's highly sensitive people. These are the people that I'm born to facilitate and work with. And then the pennies would drop and then I would make a change and then I would start to work and then everything starts to make sense. And then, you know, and then I, I, I came to a point where it was like, actually, hang on a minute. I've got all of this online techno technology ability within me and people are always saying that, you know, that they haven't got a website, they don't know how to do online marketing and what's an online course. And I suddenly thought, wow, hang on, I've got all of those skills. So now, you know, Luminance has been designed to, um, to help people with that process and get set up online. And so, so it's been, it's by constantly tuning in and think it's, it's almost like trying to, we're almost like trying to sort of feel and reveal what our souls have known all the time, but it's learning to listen and it's only through taking the steps and walking the path that it all starts to unfold. Mm, there's just, there's a resiliency in that. It feels like. I think that's right. I think it is a resilience. I think it's a faith. It's, it's a, it's a deep faith that, you know, like I, yes, it's, it's definitely a resilience of, uh, you know, of, of not giving up and making sure, you know, that I do everything I, I, I could to sort of continue with that. But it was also this, this deep inner knowing that I knew that I was on the right path and I knew it was, I knew I had to do it. So I, it's almost like, um, it's almost like learning to kind of trust that we will be guided and that light within us knows where to go and what to say to the right people and what to do if we really listen to it. Mm, that's the key, isn't it? To really listen to it, to, to, to tune into that inside of you and learn to trust that. Yes, exactly right. I think and we're both a, talking about something that is not a straight line to where we got, you know, where we are. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a, we've made a few turns along the way, kind of guided by that feeling inside of us. And I think that's a great example of there's like, if, even if you would have asked me five years ago, if I would have been doing what I'm doing now, I'm not even sure I would have been clear of that. Um, but it's, it's just following that. It's having that resiliency, keep getting back up, keep following that light inside of you, trusting that feeling, <clears throat> that feeling inside of you, right? Yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly right. It's keep, we keep getting up and we keep, you know, trusting that it will, it will unfold in front of us. We, you know, we will find the solution. We will find the way, you know, it's, and, it, and it's, it's interesting because I think it, it is an ongoing process. You know, it's, it's, I don't think we ever really, we don't ever get there. We, don't, we never get to a point where it's like, it's complete and we can just, you know, it's done. It's, it is an ongoing process. And I, you know, even right now in my business, I'm, I'm having conversations with a, you know, with a potential business partner. We're really excited about creating and designing a new product and process within the business. And so 
you know, there's a whole new kind of thing that I'm looking to embark on. And, and, and I know that once I put that in place, you know, I'm going to get really excited about the next thing and the next thing. And, and then as I look back, it's all, you know, it's all, it's that's that great saying that we live life forwards, but it only makes sense backwards. Um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of, I, you know, it's uh, looking back and it, it, we, we realized that, wow, it's like, yes, it, it all makes sense, but I didn't know at the time. <laughs> I love that. And yes, it is an ongoing process. It's a, it's kind of constantly, uh, readjusting and finding and but you you talked about something too it's like you get excited about it and that's how I am too it's like if I feel excited about something to me that's my green light to go go do it <laughs> it's just it's worked for me so far <laughs> yes I, I completely second that absolutely if it's not exciting and it's not it doesn't feel like fun and we really want to do it and we would do it for free then we're kind of on the wrong path I think <laughs> That's a very good point. Absolutely. <laughs> I love that. You know, when somebody asked me, it's like, if you won the lottery, would you keep doing that? What you're doing? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I probably would. I, I think that uh, it's, there's, it's just a part of me now to, to do what I'm doing. Right. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I would a hundred percent. I, you know, I'd carry on doing what I'm doing no matter how much money I had, you know, um, I, you know, I would carry on doing the same thing. And, and I think, you know, I, I think kind of as, as we're, as we're kind of um, coming close to wrapping up here, I think it's, you know, I think it, we, we both just kind of touched on that fun and that play and that, that enjoyment of following our hearts and doing the work that we want to do. And, and, you know, there's such a tendency I find with us as high, high senses, you know, we really want to get things right. And we're so passionate about things and we're so nervous about getting things wrong and, you know, and I, I think we, you know, we can be very hard on ourselves. And, and I certainly from my experience with myself, I know I have been over the years. And, and actually, you know, it is about the fun and the play and the joy and, and taking these steps of, you know, making the decisions it's like, yes, I'm going to do these sessions online, or I'm going to start, you know, sharing and making changes in people's lives. It is, it is meant to be fun. We are here to be joyous and playful and to, you know, to really, uh, to really make sure that we're being guided by the sense of, of adventure and playfulness. Mm, yeah, that's the green light. That's the, that's the right path. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, essentially our, our essential nature is, is very much all about um, play and joy and kind of joyful expression. I think that's, um, and, and our kind of job is in a sense is to, is to get out the way of that, to allow it to kind of manifest and come into the world. And I think there's something when you're doing something that feels meaningful to you, which is particularly important for this population, that feels joy, doesn't it? Yes, absolutely. I think that's another key indicator is, you know, is this a meaningful, you know, a meaningful pursuit that I'm doing here? Does it feel like it's aligned with what's most important to me? I, I think that's, that's really important. Otherwise, we, we lose interest very quickly. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Why many of us can't have boring conversations? Do you find that with some this? There's something about HSPs is we're not very good at small talk. And I think it's because we have to have, there has got to be meaning in the conversations <laughs> that, we, that we have and in our lives generally. Absolutely. Uh, just to be able to dive into the depths with someone is one of my favorite things. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can never be bothered to talk about the weather. Or so it's got to be like, let's just get in there. You know, let's talk about <laughs> Exactly. That's why we have so much fun talking with each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm so excited for everything that's ahead of us and all of our fun conversations in future episodes too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, me too. Me too. And, you know, and it's, it's a real opportunity for you guys out there listening to, you know, if you'd like us to answer a question or if there's a particular area that you'd love us to focus on, we would love that. So please feel free to send those in to us. Yes. And, uh, Definitely. Cool. And leave us a voice message. We're, we're going to have a link to that in the show notes. So leave us messages. If you have questions for us, um, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yes, of course, there's the, the voicemail link in the, uh, in, in the notes below. So we, we would love to hear from you. And I, you know, I, I, just to, for you guys out there to, you know, wherever you are right now, you know, just to know that this, this current situation we're in, it will change. And, you know, it could be a, the greatest opportunity right now to look at new avenues and just take that leap of faith and, and start to walk the path, follow the light and do what your heart really wants you to do. Oh, that's beautiful. I second that. Wonderful. 
Well, thank you so much for listening, everyone. And we are really excited to join you again next week for our next episode. Bye for now. Yeah, we can't wait to talk with you some more and love to hear from you guys. And it was lovely talking with you, Willow, and excited to share more next week. You too, Julie. Great to speak to you again. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. You can take my free sensitivity quiz and find all my HSP tools and resources at sensitiveconnection.com. To register for the next masterclass on how to make your shift into high sensory intelligence, visit inluminance.com. Please leave us a voice message if you have a question or comment for us to be included in a future episode. Just click the voice message button in the show notes, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from and record up to 60 seconds. We love hearing from you. And please share this episode to help others and take extra good care of yourself out there. Bye-bye, everybody.